Edward's problems. One day, the big engines were sitting in sitting in the shunting yard. They were talking to Edward. Doc told you, replied Gore. Replied Edward. He is famous. As famous as me? Nonsense. He's fate. Oh yes, he is much famouser than you. He went a hundred miles an hour before you, Gordon, were even thought of. Huh, so he says, but I didn't like his looks. He's got no dome. Never trust domeless engines. They are not respectable. <sighs> Thomas and Duck told you that already, didn't, didn't they? <sighs> yes, they did. Well, I do have to run my tray now. I will see you two later. Okay, goodbye, Edward. And Edward steamed off to get his train. Soon, Edward saw his train that Percy set up for him. Thanks, Percy. You're welcome, Edward. Have a nice journey. You too. And Edward steamed off with his train. He went on a slow start, but then started to speed up. Soon, Edward was racing down the line. I can do this. Then, Edward popped into Natford Station. And then he backed up towards the junction to switch on to Thomas's branch line to get back onto the main line in the correct direction. Soon Edward ran along Thomas's branch line and, and went back onto the main line. Soon, Edward passed through his station before hitting the junction onto his branch line. Then, Edward steamed over the bridge. But at last, battered, weary, but unbeaten, Edward then steamed in. Edward then raced into the main docks. Peep, peep. Sir Top Hat angrily pointed to the clock, but excited people cheered and thanked Edward, his driver and fireman. Ah, oh, phew, made it right on time. Ah, and it's just after 8 p.m. <sighs> oh, that taken hours to get here. Well done, old boy. You actually made it. Yes, I did. Even though Sir Talking Hat pointed to the clock angrily, I think I've literally made it. I made it across for hours and hours. Then Edward reached away.